Hello, this is Celeste here from Aguascalientes, and you're watching Teacher Learning Task with Piri Herrera and Benjamin Stewart. Six, 2018. My name is Benjamin Stewart from beautiful Aguascalientes, Mexico. Morning, everybody. This is Piri Herrera, also from Aguascalientes. Hoping you had a nice week and enjoy all your activities. Today, Saturday, we join again to talk about education, something related to language teaching, and with our special guest, Adriana Macias, which we will introduce in a minute. Uh, just uh, doing the generals of the talk for the people in Facebook Live. Remember, this is secondary transmission. If you click the link above, you can watch Benjamin Stewart, which right now you see on the screen, and listen kind of hard. You can listen to him better and uh, have a better plane of everybody of us. And uh, after different talks, last week we have guests now in the second guest in teacher learning cast, and this week, once again. Yes, and uh, just a quick shout out before we get started to the Universidad Panamericana. Uh, yesterday we had a great teacher conference. I had the pleasure of uh, giving a talk there and meeting up with some teachers that I haven't seen in a long time. Many students were ex-students. Also had uh, the opportunity to spread the word of the bot broadcast that we're doing here, Teacher Learning Cast. So uh, if those teachers are watching, welcome. And uh, to be a part of this broadcast, we do encourage you to uh, to be engaged and, and give us feedback. And I think the best way to do that is to find our Facebook page and uh, leave comments. If you search Teacher Learning Cast, you'll be able to find the page and uh, give us feedback. Let us know how we're doing, topics that you want to see. If you ever want to be part of the, con the, the broadcast, let us know as well. We're always looking for teachers to be part of the conversation. So uh, please reach out to us, let us know. And uh, again, welcome to the broadcast. Yes, uh, you can reach us as the different media. We have the fan page, the Facebook fan page, which is Teacher Learning Cast. You can look for it like that, that, like that in Facebook. You can also reach us through our personal websites in which we have playlists and information about the show specifically, besides all our personal information. Benjamin's website is benjaminlstuart.wordpress.com. My website is homers2000.weeksite.com slash PDHA, um, and uh, the easiest way to reach us is just to Google Teacher Learning Cast Benjamin Stewart or Teacher Learning Cast Piri Herrera, and you can reach all of our sources and the media you can contact us through. <clears throat> and well, today we want to focus, uh, now formally we introduce the guest for today, Adriana Macias Torres. Hi, good morning, how are you? Uh, she is a teacher who's been, um, who's had a lot of experience in different fields, who right now works for different institutions and organizations, and, and who has a lot of experience in different uh, fields of formation, and but, but the core of it would be teacher formation, teacher education uh, for pre-service teachers and in-service teachers. And uh, just a little bit about her, she's been working in... Uh, Prepa en línea here in Mexico. She's working also at different universities. And, uh, and the reason why we invite her today, uh, besides all her credentials and her experience and, and her degrees and studies and everything she's done, is uh, what we've been talking during last week's inviting you to what just happened last uh, Tuesday, which was the material aids, uh, the teaching aids exhibition here at Universidad Autónoma de Huascalientes. It's an important event that she organizes with her students of the fourth semester. So uh, just uh, uh, the kids from the, from the BA in ELT here at, uh, at Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. And uh, every year this event has been a success and, and it's been growing in such a way that right now there is a lot to talk about uh, besides the material and, 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 and the idea of the academic uh, heart of it. Uh, now we can talk about how these kind of events go beyond one university and reach more people. And that's why she's invited. So 
Welcome, teacher. Thank Adelina you Macias. very much. So I'm very happy to be here with you. <laughs> yeah. so. Ben, you know, you are uh, always prepared with questions and ideas. So I, I, so I ask me anything you want. <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, well, after all I said, I just would like to cover these two aspects at some point, which would be the idea of the class itself, which is teaching aids and uh, the design and preparation selection of material for uh, students, for, for free services students. But on the other side, I would also like to cover the idea of how important it is to have a students doing this kind of event. So uh, we can start whatever you want, Ben. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start, actually, Petey. Um, you know, we had uh, the pleasure this past Tuesday to witness uh, the last, uh, the basically the conference, the presentations that the students made. But Adriana, maybe a good place to start is maybe describing uh, the purpose of the course and some just general background about the course itself and how how you approach it uh, uh, or how you approached it this semester. Okay, well, so the, the subject, as Peter was saying, is uh, teaching aids development. And the main purpose is that the, the students design several materials for different skills. Uh, we see some uh, theoretical aspects uh, related to the process that we have to follow in order to, to design something. So it is not just to come up with an, uh, with an idea and do it and that's it. So they have to think about the objective of the teaching aid. They have to develop certain uh, aspects to, to focus on. Uh, also, I ask them to, to think about different purposes, for not to use the, the material just one time in one class and for one, uh, one group of students. So that, that would be the main objective of the class. So like focus on the teaching aid development in different skills in English. As, as a little bit as a little bit of the background from the students, uh, there are four semester students which just passed through uh, talking about the, the teaching part. They've been through classroom observation. They've been through teaching workshop, which was pretty much the talk last week with our mm -hmm. students. And right now they are in the same semester mm -hmm. in which is their first encounter with a real group as assistant of a, of a main teacher mm -hmm. in the course and they teach uh, just segments of the class at this point, but it's mm -hmm. parallel to their first encounter mm -hmm. with a real classroom. Okay, so kind of a follow-up to that, to your description of the course. You know, we, were, we had the pleasure of looking at the final product, and I know the students put in a lot of work uh, to, to produce uh, not only the materials, but the way that they were going to present uh, the information. But I'm curious throughout the semester, if you could speak a little bit about assessment, like how did you approach uh, assessment? How did they get a grade overall throughout the semester? Um, again, and from my perspective, just having seen the, the final product. Okay, well, so they have different aspects to, to be assessed. Uh, in the first, uh, I divide the, the course into, like into sections. And in the first section, they see all the theoretical aspects. And we have a, a written exam. Right, so they see like the main concepts about teaching aids, about technology, and after that they design. Well, each week they des uh, they design um, different kind of, of sets of teaching aids. Uh, we have different purposes. So that is another aspect that it, that would be the participation that they have during the the course. And also uh, as a final project, we have the uh, this is like a four sets project that that are the ones that they present at the exhibition. They also have a percentage for participating during the exhibition, and they have not only the demonstrations, but also certain uh, tasks that they have been assigned by me, so as, uh, such as the organization of the event, like making invitations, like, um, I don't know, the decorations, so everything is also graded. And the last part that we're going to be grading is like the, the reflection about the, the whole experience of the exhibition, and we have a self-evaluation and an evaluation for the for the peers that were working in, in the teams. So what we saw at the mm -hmm. exhibition is not is not everything they do. It's just uh, mm -hmm. one of uh -huh. every, everything, uh, all the kind of materials I design and everything. They yeah, prefer. so this is, uh, we can consider the, this as, a, as the final project that they have to present. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the semester, they uh, design like eight, sets right. of, of different materials. Right. They also work with uh, selection and adaptation. Okay. So that will be another aspect. So they have designed around 10 sets of material. What, what do they cover in general when they design one set? 
Okay, so for example, as I said at the beginning of the course, uh, they have different experiences. Uh, they, for example, once I, uh, I gave them just a, a sheet of paper and I asked them to design something. Because uh, in the first task, what I want them to do is to, to develop their creativity. They all, well, we say that they are not creative. So I try to demonstrate them uh, that they can do a lot of things just with, for example, with a sheet of paper. And also sometimes I ask them to bring recyclable things and they design something. So there are different tasks that they have mm -hmm. to develop. And then little by little, they, for example, they just describe the material. In the next one, they describe the objective. Mm -hmm. So little by little, they, are, they, they construct a rational. So that is a, the main, in the, in the last project, that is what they do. They okay. have the set of material, but they have a rational, yes? Okay. And also they have an implementation project. So they have to take one of the materials that they have designed and they have to really use it in a, in a class. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> um, in the rationale, I'm curious if, there, if there's any discussion about learning theories and and how that either relates, if, if, if that is part of the discussion, if that is also linked in some way with any other courses that, they've, uh, that they're currently taking, or yeah, basically, for example, the, the uh, practicum classes, or maybe even a linguistic class where there's theory uh, being discussed a little bit more. Um, is this theory come up in the rationale in your discussions with material design? Yes, I think that this is like uh, an integration of, of different subjects because uh, they have to, when they create the student's profile, they have to talk about the learning styles, the, for example, the age, how they learn a certain age. They talk about, for example, games as a part of the learning process. They talk about strategies. So I think that in it, that this subject and this uh, designs integrate a lot of, a lot of things. So this is, and this is very important. And we discuss it because they have like many exhibitions during the, the course before the presentation. So we discuss about like elements related specifically to the, to the material that they have designed and also to what they think about the, the whole process that it took. Yeah, well, well uh, luckily we have the same group sometimes when, during the same semester. And uh, what happens, for example, in their first encounter in the real group, I suggest them, which is not something official, mm -hmm. but I, I tend to, to suggest them to use the materials they are designing at your class exactly. And sometimes they, by their own, they come and they say, I tried this because mm -hmm. I'm preparing this material for the exhibition. In fact, if you go through the patient, the plant patient Facebook teacher learning test, you can see one of, one of the videos that we have about the exhibition because we had a lot of videos about it. Uh, one of the guys exactly explains that. I tried this in my class before designing the whole set mm -hmm. and it worked really well. So now I completed with the whole design mm -hmm. and, and, and it's kind of an informal relationship uh, in that sense. Mm -hmm. And this is really important mm -hmm. because uh, for example, when I started teaching this uh, subject, I thought that it was uh, that we need to show and to use what we are doing because uh, it is not just for that they come with a lot of beautiful things and a, uh, very creative uh, material and they just show it to the teacher and they just go. So that's why I decided to do this uh, exhibition a long time ago. Right? A long time ago, like <laughs> eight years, around eight years. I think so. That's I think that we started, uh, I don't know, in 2005. 2005, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, thinking about now, because you mentioned a, a few minutes ago that you have your students do other kind of, um, I would look at it maybe as many presentations or presentations before the final um, yeah, presentation. Can you speak a little bit about how those presentations evolved over over time? Like, and did those presentations do do they include or should they include any mention of the perp not the purpose but the intended audience and maybe learning theories that are involved in the um, in the material and the use of the material. Can you talk a little bit about how your students kind of evolved over time giving presentations that led up to the, the final presentation? Okay, uh, before the final exhibition, um, in order to check what they do in each of the, of the sets, we assign uh, some time to, uh, to the half of the group, they, they present uh, one day, and we had like a demonstration of the material. 
among the classmates. So they present what they did, they talk about the, the process, uh, the other students uh, have to, to play with the material, so we know if it, if it is uh, good to apply it in a, in a classroom. So they receive a lot of feedback from the classmates and from myself. So it is, um, and, it, and I think it is really good because they know that the material that they design has to be correct uh, related to the language, and it has to be, um, I don't know, like, ready to be presented so with no mistakes uh, it has to work well for example if you saw they they show a lot of uh like games so in order to check the instructions in order to check if it really really works so is it a requirement then for a grade for your class that they actually use the material and then give feedback as to how effective or efficient or engaging the the material is yeah, so before that, if they don't present the material in the sessions, they cannot present it in the in the final exhibition. Because we, we need to to have it correct and complete. And they have to know how it works. They were working in different groups. So all the team members have to know how it works. So that's why we have these demonstrations in the classroom. So when you say team members, can you talk a little bit about how the teams were organized and how they work? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, they, for the final okay. exhibition, they were working in, in groups, three or four people. They, uh, they were working together. They designed the four sets, and uh, they they prepared this set for the final exhibition. So that's why they need to know exactly how it works, how it was developed, the purposes, and everything. Because during the exhibition, they have different tasks, so they need to be in the stand, and they need to know everything about the material. So it has to be a real group work then they have to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I was thinking about the, the, the idea of technology. Uh, we're in a technological era, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. moment in which technology uh, comes, mm -hmm. new technology comes mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. and new changes come every day. And we even have uh, majors and, mm -hmm. and, and long study degrees just mm -hmm. about technology. How do you handle that? in the middle of this uh, or, or what is the, the focus or how do you move from technology to handmade material mm -hmm. or crafts or things like this okay they have a special unit in the syllabus where we talk about technology so we see different aspects about like i don't know even internet uh, several tools that they can use mm -hmm. they were working mainly with selection okay. and adaptation okay. so they took materials from websites and they made some changes and or they created, for example, PowerPoint presentations that could be like the, I don't know, the most simple thing to do. Okay. But I think that it, uh, we saw the, those uh, theoretical aspects, but uh, we have differences in each of the groups mm -hmm. because there are groups that love technology okay. and there are another ones that say, no, I don't like technology. <laughs> okay. So I try to, I don't know, like to manage that okay. depending on the, on the, I don't know, on the student's profile. Okay. Good. So it depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't, uh, something that, that I don't try to do is to tell them, you have to do this, or in your, I gave them like a specific guidelines for the design, but I don't tell them exactly what to do. So okay. they really create what they want or what they need in their questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of, uh, when you go through all of these different stages, different mm -hmm. material, different levels of, of technical complexity in the design, mm -hmm. in, the, in the background, the technical uh, uh, rational mm -hmm. or whatever you do with all the material, it's progressive. But what do you see? Do you is it noticeable the change from in the students? Are they things you actually detect from the beginning through the process till the end? Yes, this is really really interesting because the first question that I ask in the first day is, "Are you creative?" And the common answer is, <laughs> no. "No, I cannot do anything. I cannot draw. Okay. I'm not creative." So. This is the common answer. Oh, right. And when we get to the final exhibition, so yes. the answer is, yes, I am creative. Okay. And with the different tasks that I have been designing, they discover that they can be creative. Okay. And they can be creative in different ways because they have different skills. So maybe one person can be, can be so good for drawing, okay. but another person can be so good for selecting something or for designing something with technology. So okay. I respect those abilities that they have. All right. 
Ben? Yeah, talking more uh, specifically about the conference itself, can you speak a little bit about how it's evolved over the years? You, I know you've been doing this for, for many years, um, but can you talk about how it's evolved over the years and how it and ultimately turned up uh, how it did this, uh, this, this past week? And uh, maybe talk a little bit about that. Well, so I, I remember that the first uh, time that I had this subject, I had the exhibition in a classroom. Yes, only with my students. Uh, I was talking to one of my my students in this work, that is uh, Gerardo. Gerardo. Okay. Gerardo. Yeah, he's a teacher. Actually, he's, he's a, a teacher, teacher now. Here. He yeah. at the VA. <laughs> okay, and uh, we were talking about this, and he said that uh, he remembers that we also had like a kind of talk that they also presented in another conference later. So it was really interesting because, my, as I said, my my first thought is everything that we do here in the classroom cannot stay in the classroom. It has to be shared with somebody else. So we started first with a, a mini exhibition in the classroom. Later on, we work in a, we went outside in the building. So they did, at the beginning they didn't have like a specific topic. For example, if you saw this uh, in this year, they talk about cartoons, and that was the main theme. But in the first exhibitions, they didn't have a, a special topic. So, and they didn't get uh, dressed as they do right now. So it was just like a formal, uh, how can we say, like a formal exhibition, right? right? Mm -hmm. But little by little, they started with more ideas. So it has been evol evolving because of the students also. So I think that they have a lot of ideas. I gave them specific guidelines to to complete the task that we have to, to have in the exhibition. But the ideas of being, um, like having this kind of topics or getting the customs and the different activities is because of the students also. So they have helped me to, to improve this idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, And little by little, we have been like joining a lot of people. For example, in this, uh, this year, we had the Universidad del Batonio, we have also Normal Superior, we had a lot of uh, parents also that came and friends, so other teachers from the university. So it was really, really good, really mm -hmm. interesting. Because I noticed that this year um, that you actually had, it wasn't just presentations, the students were not just presenting their materials, but you actually had workshops. The students conducted their own workshops. I'm curious how that came about and how you chose uh, the students to do what types of uh, workshops Okay, well, in the, I remember in the in previous years, uh, we tried to do something like that. Um, I remember that last year we couldn't do it because of the, of the time and because uh, we had a, I don't know, we didn't organize it well, right? But, uh, but nowadays I think that we have a good organization. I, I thought about the, the workshops. And it was my idea at the beginning, right? But nowadays, I think that with the help of the students, it can be easier because they have more ideas. Uh, I can have one idea, but they help me to improve it. Mm -hmm. So we decided to, I just tell them, we have to do a certain workshops. So the, the people that come to the exhibition do something. And they also um, work with the creativity. So they, and they have more ideas and also, it is really important to tell them that they have to share what they know because sometimes it is something that it's really okay. difficult. We do something for us, but we don't really share or we don't want to. But who, who, how did you decide which students did uh, what types of workshops? Because I, I mean, it's my understanding that, that not all the students did workshops. Is that correct? Yes. I, well, for example, sometimes I ask them if they, I had the ideas, I told them what they had to do and they were really willing to do it. And I didn't have to really choose them. They asked me to, to join them in the different activities. We also went to the BA in French and Spanish. And we also had like a, it was a talk and a mini exhibition. So I also took other students, but I, but it was really easy to, to ask them to come with me. So they are really willing to do everything that I ask them to do. Yeah, but uh, I just like to make a parenthesis now that you mentioned the French and uh, and the Spanish uh, BA in, in teaching here at the uh, university. Uh, this Monday we're going to have their material exhibition, which is uh, a little bit smaller, but uh, it's going to be a, a starting at two mm -hmm. in the afternoon, and it's going to be in the Sala de Osus Multiples, 
uh, mm -hmm. right here at the language department here at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. And uh, I would like to make a short transmission for teacher learning cast because everything is in French. So I pretty much don't speak French <laughs> and I can do the interviews as we did. But uh, you feel free to join also this event because it's open to the audience. If you want to come, it starts at two in the after two in, in, in the afternoon. Uh, I also like to invite everybody to join us through our different medias to contact us, to make questions, to suggest topics, to give us your opinion about the things we're discussing here, whether in the live transmission or uh, afterwards in the in the on-demand videos. We have uh, this is the show number twelve, program number twelve. So you can um, uh, go through all of them and see the topics of interest and, and make comments, ask questions, suggest whatever you want. You can reach us through the fan page in Facebook, which is Teacher Learning Cast, or you can go through our personal web pages. Benjamin Stewart is uh, benjaminlstewart.wordpress.com, and my own is homers2000.weeksite.com slash pdha. You can join us there, or you can Google Teacher Learning Cast Benjamin Stewart or Teacher Learning Cast P.D. Herrera, and you're going to have all the contact. Feel free to join us, discuss, um, give your opinion, uh, and, and uh, give us any comment you want to, right? Remember, this is a, this is a nonprofit show in, in, in which uh, we just want to share our points of view and our opinions in whatever we are doing in this uh, teacher formation, teacher uh, language teaching world. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, going back a little bit to, to we are talking uh, today with Adriana Macias, uh, uh, an experienced teacher who held a very important event uh, that has become really, really uh, uh, of a big impact, not just in, in the main institution where she held it, but in different schools that now join this. And uh, if, uh, I need to say this, it's followed by other institutions and it's replicated in other institutions, which we have been there and, and people have been telling that exactly uh, that that it's uh, it, it, these are ideas that come from the core of being participants of the event here with mm -hmm. teacher Adriana, and and that's the focus. I like to to turn a little bit now mm -hmm. towards uh, the benefits of having these kind of events mm -hmm. for for students. Well, I think that it is really really beneficial. Now that you said that we share with other institutions, we also share. Uh, I have been working with Dulce from uh, the VA in French and Spanish, and once we tried to work together, the first idea that we had is uh, that we wanted to join the students from the VA in ELT and the ones from the French mm -hmm. and, and Spanish uh, VA, but uh, just because of the dates and the time, we couldn't do it okay. like that. So that's why she started to do like, um, she said that it is like a mini exhibition, but I think it's something really good. They just create one set of material. Okay. But the idea is like, as you were saying, it's replicated. So we are joining other institutions, other classmates, other teachers. So it is really, really good to be sharing what we do. And for example, in the Universidad del Retoño, I have had two teachers, that is Yajaira de Leon mm -hmm. and Jacqueline Rico. They had a subject that is similar to this uh, to this, uh, to this one that we have here in the Autonoma. And they participated when they were students here and they do something similar. And they have been inviting me to, to be a, a judge in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And the last year we will also have a, a talk about teaching aids. So it was a very good experience because mm -hmm. it is really beneficial to see how it is uh, working. So it is not like, a, how can we say, only my event, right? So okay. it's, some, it's an idea that I had once and I am uh, sharing, sharing with some, some other teachers. Uh, I think that the students feel really, really good when they do this kind of activities. Um, for example, this time they said that they were very tired because they had a lot of stress, <laughs> and it is true. There was a lot of people. There was a lot of we people had a this lot of year. People. I think more than any other year. Yeah. Last year, there was, there was a lot of people in that event. Matter. and But this year, we had uh, a, lot. a lot, a lot of people. Uh, the opening was mm -hmm. packed up more than 100 yeah. people inside a small room, besides yeah. everybody mm -hmm. that was outside waiting mm -hmm. that couldn't get into the opening session. And uh, and it's getting big in that yeah. sense. And the students said that they were really, really happy. And they, they said words like fun, uh, enjoyable. And I heard a lot of uh, times like they were sharing 
They say, I, I wanted to share what I do, and it was very good that they were asking me questions. So it is not just to show what they did during the, the subject, mm -hmm. but also they develop certain organization skills. They, um, I don't know, they practice the language. Mm -hmm. They socialize with other people. We make connections with our other institutions. So it is really, really beneficial. It's very peculiar that you mentioned about the sharing because mm -hmm. if you go through the videos in Teacher Learning Cast, that's yes. exactly the final question I was asking everybody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. What about the sharing? How do you feel mm -hmm. about that? Mm -hmm. And what's the benefit of it? And, and, and one of, if, if, I, I wouldn't like to give it away. So you can go and watch the videos. Uh, but it's very interesting the reaction of the students when you ask them, uh, mm -hmm. what do you get from sharing? <laughs> that because that was mainly the main question. What's what's your gaining if you share? What what do you get? And the students have very peculiar answers. And uh, I yes. would like you all to go and visit the page. You the, the viewers also go and visit the, 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 the cast and see the reaction. See how benefit. Yes, and that is something that I that was one of my main goals because I always say during the course that uh, when we had the exhibitions uh, in the inside the classroom and we, when we have the final exhibition. And something important is to let people copy. And I ask them, you can copy ideas. And it is copying like in the good sense because they have to be sharing. And if I have one idea and then I share it with you, you can develop something, I don't know, something better or some other idea. So we improve and we share. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very good for, for the students. So they were really, really happy and they are changing the beliefs. So that, that's something very good. Now, they are sharing uh, about material. They focus on material. But there's a parallel situation besides of, besides the organization of the event and the development of uh, connections and this sharing. Uh, when I asked some, uh, some of my students about this, specifically, I'm going to focus on one example. We I went to one of the workshops, and I asked the girls at the end, how did they feel about the workshop, about the event? My focus was to have opinions about the general situation of uh, the experience of organizing. But uh, maybe I didn't went through with the question and the way they understand it, or maybe that's what they had in their mind because the immediate answer was about the worship itself and the handling of the big group of mm -hmm. students, of people, mm -hmm. of peers and teachers there at their worship mm -hmm. in which uh, they felt a challenge at that moment Because let me remind you what I told at the beginning. They, they are in a semester in which they are in the first encounter with the real group as assistants. There's always another teachers behind them, who besides them, uh, that helps them when they teach small groups for 15, 20 minutes. Now, they had a workshop of at least half an hour, 40 minutes, four peers, mm -hmm. For teachers, which is a big challenge, and their answer came in that sense. Their answers, their, their answer about the question uh, was not focused on the idea of the material or the event. It was focused on the idea of the challenge of having this worship in front of all these people. So this, this gives me the sense that there are a lot of parallel learnings which are not uh, I, obviously they are re related to the topic, to the material, to the exhibition and the sharing and all this, but but that go through other subjects and we can take advantage of it. Did, did you notice any other aspects they parallel mm -hmm. uh, work with through this event preparation and and the actual mm -hmm. event? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now that you mentioned, well, they they also practice a lot of their teaching skills because they were planning. They had to make a plan for the for the worship, right? Okay. So I gave them the ideas, as I told you before, I gave them just general guidelines. So, but they have to develop all the, the planning because they also had to, to prepare the material that they were going to use in the, in the different workshops. So they, they had to plan. So they are integrating a lot, of, a lot of skills. Some of them are already teaching uh, now, but for some other, uh, it was the first experience that they, they had with teaching. Mm -hmm. So it was really good to see them how how they face these challenges. Because I remember in one of the in one of the workshops, they had a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They planned something, but when they saw a lot of people coming, they had to change the strategy, and okay. it really worked well. So and um, they were really really excited. They they were not stressed because of this. So that is something something positive for them. So I, I like that. 
you used uh, specific rubrics for the final presentation and if you used any other types of uh, rubrics throughout uh, leading up to the final presentation, Ariana. Yes, we had some uh, rubrics for the, mainly for the four sets, that is the, the, the final project. Not exactly for the first task because uh, I want them to like to, um, I don't know, to see the abilities that they have, like to explore what they can do and work with the creativity, right? But uh, as I said, they have a, a written exam. So that is a, a form of okay. part of the assessment. Right. And I have some rubrics for, for the for the final sets and for the participation in the in the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of jumping back to your comment about sharing, and I, I just want to kind of emphasize again the importance of that. Uh, not only, you know, it, I think it's great to have uh, people from the outside come in, uh, external to the university, to really have this experience and share this experience with others. But I also, in, in my case, I wanted to reach out to my uh, prope students. Uh, this, these are prope students who are going to be entering into officially the, the BA next year. Um, and uh, they're writing students, and I wanted them to provide some feedback. So I'm hoping that uh, my students in Prope are, are giving written feedback directly to your students, but I, I see an opportunity as well that we can, within the BA in our case, also kind of share and make those connections and have find opportunities for students to interact with each other that are related to their respective classes. So, so again, they can kind of support each other and learn from each other, um, especially in my case, Prope students who are still kind of getting used to the, the BA, learning about the BA. Uh, I think it's really good experience for my students to become familiar with uh, different courses uh, that they're going to be later a part of. And also, in my case, being able to practice the writing skill. Um, but yeah, later I'll be curious to talk with you, Adriana, about how they responded, if they thought that, that how they felt about receiving that type of feedback. Uh, from their peers within the BA. But I think your your point about sharing is is so important at many different levels. And and I think, uh, again, I want to congratulate you for really offering a, a really good opportunity for your for your students and for our BA and for the, the community at large now that this has kind of expanded out to uh, the general public. Yes. No, and it was, uh, for example, now that you mentioned your activity with the proper students, and uh, some of them told me, oh, teacher, some of the students were interviewing me. Yeah. And I felt really, really like, fa like a famous like people, a famous, yeah. <laughs> like a famous person. Like, so, a, like a rock star, remember yeah. that, man? <laughs> and they asked me what, what was going on, why they were interviewed. But it was right. really, really, really good. They were really excited. So that, that is one of the, of the main objectives. And also that they interact with the students uh, from the BA because the, um, they have to do it and they have to be sharing with other institutions also. They said that they like to work with other students and they and to know what they are doing because sometimes we don't have the, those connections right. and, it, and I think it's necessary and to see that we can have a uh, very good collection and we can work together and to do something better and improve from the projects that we're having. So it, was a, it was a good opportunity. Right. There, there are two aspects related to this sharing that, that uh, I kind of feel about the, the event. And, 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 and you guys, you were there too, Ben. Uh, you can uh, help me out about this and, and, and get me on track if I'm wrong in that sense. I think our students at that moment, as a general part of their profile, they're in a moment, they're in a crucial moment of uh, uh, growing not only in, in uh, not, not only as teachers, mm -hmm. but as individuals. Uh, it's a moment, and, and I could see that, and I'm saying that because I could see how professional they work at the moment of presenting, designing the material, having all this knowledge about the technical part, giving their ideas about them as teachers in front of a classroom, using that uh, that creation that they have their reflections about it. And that shows uh, 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 how mature they are about uh, their development in teachers. But at the same time, looking at them, the topic this they chose, <laughs> cartoon aids work, <laughs> and uh, dressing up like uh, cartoon characters, 
and which, by the way, it's not my generation cartoon characters, it's their generation yeah. cartoon characters. Uh, looking at the way they had fun, looking at the attitudes they had, you can make a comparison in here, and you can see a crucial point in which they have grown ups, to put it in, in, in some way, uh, I don't want to sound bad, uh, mean or, or uh, like an old they're guy for adults. students, they but they, they're, they're like young adults <laughs> with certain uh, very mature mm -hmm. thoughts in preparation, but at the same time, there is still those boys mm -hmm. and girls in formation, in growing, and so that's why I'm, I'm talking about, I could see a mom, uh, it's a crucial moment of maturity. Now, mm -hmm. that's it. The important thing, something that Adriana mentioned uh, in a talk we had afterwards, after, after the, the event, and she mentioned something specifically about the positive attitudes, the mood, the vibes that were created at that moment. So I put those things into, into the same bowl. And it's a very important mix because they are in a crucial moment in their lives, as my point of view is in, in that sense. But at the same time, you have something, a reinforcement of, example, the sharing. Mm -hmm. Example, the importance of uh, the, the satisfaction of all the hard work we did throughout the semester. Mm -hmm. So this make sure it becomes something essential, not only for teachers for life in general what do you think about this well this is this is really i don't know it's really interesting and, and i really love to see everything that they do because they, they are always really creative and in each exhibition we have different things we can see different aspects that they develop so and it is um now that you're saying about the positive attitudes i think that's something that has to be contagious right because sometimes we can um we can have very bad attitudes and they are, con uh, they get infected sometimes with this. Uh, with this, <laughs> with this we don't even realize. We don't even realize. Right? If, we can, if, we, if it can be contagious, so uh, I am thinking about having this uh, positive attitudes, right? And something that I really like is that they really enjoy the, right. the exhibition. This is something that I told them uh, a day before. I told them that we were going to be really tired, really stressed, and that we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but they have to enjoy everything that they do because this is like the final product, right? So I think that um, uh, it is something really interesting and it's something that they need because we are only, sometimes we're only focused on the academic aspects okay. and we are very strict about that, but they need these uh, opportunities to socialize. To, I remember that they were also dancing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was not part of the event, but they, they, were, but they, dancing, they were dancing. And they they were really having fun, and they were talking to other classmates. They don't have a lot of opportunities to talk to to students from the from the BA, mm -hmm. so I think that this is a good opportunity to do it. So mm -hmm. yeah, and and my point in here is that uh, how an academic situation uh, can take part also in the social uh, at the social level. At the, uh, at the interpersonal connection level without leaving the academics aside. Uh, some, uh, kind of what we talked before in previous show, right? You remember when we had a, a show and we, and we talked about connecting with the students and these ideas and, and how we can uh, have this uh, kind of personal contact, positive attitudes, things that make students grow and make ourselves grow. I mean, it, I think it, it, it affects all participants. Uh, and at the same time, we do not lose track of the objective and the academic situation. I mean, all this fun, all these attitudes, all this mood, the feeling, and, and all this dancing and everything was in the middle of an academic. Uh, so you're putting, you're putting the academic life, you're putting their teaching life into a different plane. It's not me, the person, or me, the, 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 me uh, Juanito, or, or, or Luisito, uh, and then, Mm -hmm. uh, my job as teacher Luis or, or teacher Juan, right? No, it's putting it at the same plane and making this mixture. I and think. I think that it's something that the, that the students need because I, as I have uh, told you, I have the, the specific guidelines, the general guidelines, right? I tell them you have to do this and this and this, um, talking about the academic aspect, right. right? But they come up with a lot of ideas. I remember that the, one, the first... Uh, 
theme, uh, thematic, thematic uh, exhibition with them, right. was a, a student's idea. They say, why if we, uh, can we do, for example, a casino uh, right. inside the exhibition? And I started thinking, well, it would be a possibility. Mm -hmm. So they used to, uh, when, for example, when other students saw that they were uh, having a casino in the final exhibition, they decided to create other, thi other things. Okay. So they, uh, this, as I said, this is contagious. For example, right. if, uh, you told me that the students from the second semester, they were saying, ah, oh, but when we had this subject, we're going to do this yeah, and this. Course. So this is really good because it, maybe it's a need that they have. They need to have these uh, opportunities to share to have contact with other students, with other institutions, to have fun. Because exactly. sometimes we just focus on the academic aspects and we don't have fun. And it is possible to have fun when teaching, when having academic things. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I totally agree with everything that's being said here. I, the, I, the only thing I would add here is we, we've talked maybe a lot about e-portfolios. And I think right. this is kind of the overall intention. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same intention. It's the same ideas. Like how can we provide opportunities for students to share all the hard work that they do. You know, the simple example I have every semester uh, teaching a writing class, students create uh, poems, right? So they spend a lot of times writing poems. It's very difficult for them to do that. But it's different than if they just spend all that time and they, they write it and then it's gone. It's They forget about it. They leave it versus actually doing a poetry reading, posting the actual written uh, poem along with their their reading maybe an image and and creating a space online to share that those efforts uh with others i think that is i think uh lays the groundwork for being able to connect uh, with others they have this personal professional e-portfolio that they can use later to find you know to make further connections when they go into finding uh that ideal job that they're looking for or maybe opportunities for exchange programs, whatever the case may be, but they're conscious of their own personal development and they have evidence or a record of that over time. And I, you know, this is one example having conferences, they're, they're creating videos, they're uh, creating actual artifacts, you know, materials that they, that they can have and use later on. But I think this is very much in conjunction with this idea of an e-portfolio and really setting the stage in our training program for them to continue to be uh, open and sharing uh, professionals, right? We, I think we've all seen cases where some uh, teachers are may, maybe less comfortable with sharing and, and maybe they're working more in isolation, right? So I think our purpose is the opposite of that and trying to promote students to learn how to network, learn how to socialize, make those connections, and enjoy teaching right enjoy the experience of learning and teaching itself because i think you would agree that if they can learn how to do it themselves when they go in and start teaching their students that's going to transfer into uh that learning experience as well right that's that's, that's uh character formation in that sense which they yes. can bring later on to their own uh, teaching life once they are in service. In fact, that's uh, one one of the questions I ask to, to the guys I interview. You can look in the videos and teacher learning cast fan page. Uh, I ask them if they would uh, like to replicate these kind of events afterwards. Mm -hmm. And some of them, I mean, all of them definitely want to, but some of them mention like they want to do it before leaving the BA. Mm -hmm. They want to do it again mm -hmm. because they had the experience and now they want to do it better. And some of them totally got into the mm -hmm. idea, definitely, I, I want to do this with my students once I'm there, mm -hmm. right? And, then, so, so, and it tells a lot. There are a lot of comments, there are a lot of things we can rescue, we can analyze, uh, and if you go through the different videos, we have the analysis, the technical part. Uh, I was kind of interviewing, uh, asking a couple of questions to, to the participants. And, uh, and Benjamin, I know you were recording actually the presentations from the stands from the students. Uh, and I think we have a lot of good material there to analyze, to, to discuss, and for sure we will go back to it mm -hmm. once. And, and please, our audience and the ones that are watching, thank you for watching, thank you for, for joining us live, or, or if you are doing, if you are watching this afterwards on the on-demand video, uh, please feel free to ask, uh, and you can go afterwards through the other videos of the event that we had with Elena, and you can rescue whatever is interesting for you, and you can ask and make your comments, post them, so we can know what you want to hear 
and we can uh, invite again Adriana or invite more people to join us and talk about uh, whatever you would like us to talk. And I also want to invite you to the, we also have a Facebook uh, page that is Teachers as Teaching Aids uh, Designers. Mm -hmm. And we have been working with this page for around two years, two or three years, more or less. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, all my students uploaded all the, the materials that you saw at the exhibition. They had the, the objectives, the description of the activities. And it, it, this page is also growing. And we had mm -hmm. a lot of people that it's liking the page. Uh, we have a lot of people from India. This is really interesting. Uh, so it is growing, and we have a lot of ideas there. I am going to be also uh, posting different things about the, the exhibition, and we're going to continue with this sharing. All right. Well, for sure, we will have the link here at Teacher Learning Cast, so we can keep on uh, this sharing, right? <laughs> ben? Yeah, so I think we'll stop there for uh, today. Adriana, again, thank you very much for taking the time to share your experience, and um, I think we can all learn from uh, from what you've gone through and your students have created. So I thank you very much uh, for sharing. And uh, again, just a quick invitation to anyone else who wants to share their experiences to be part of the broadcast, let us know. Uh, we're lucky enough to have Andrea in our own BA, but uh, it can be from any school. If you have a similar experience and that uh, you want to share, and uh, we're open to have you on, on the broadcast. But I want to thank everybody for watching uh, today's broadcast. And uh, I think we'll close uh, today's session. And uh, we hope to see you soon in the, in the next uh, broadcast. We'll, we broadcast every Saturday morning around 8, 8.15 in the morning. And uh, so, yeah, thank you. thanks again for watching. Yes, I just want to add, uh, you don't have to come physically to the transmission if you want to join us in the broadcast. We can do it through the handout. So whatever you are. If you want to join us to discuss something, we can do it. You just need to tell us in advance, and we fix it up. Thank you very much, Adriana. We enjoy a lot of the event. We enjoy having you here, and we always enjoy these talks. Ben, it's a pleasure always to uh, discuss with you about education. And it's a pleasure to work with you. You are a very, very, I don't know, collaborative group. <laughs> so thank you for sharing also. Thank you very much for the viewers, the guys that join us in, in Facebook Live. Remember, this is secondary transmission, the ones that are just joining. We just finished for today, but the video will be, maybe there's a gap sometimes in which uh, when we finish the transmission and we upload the, the edited edition, the edit edition, edition has just a bumper at the beginning, but it's pretty much the same. And uh, But you can watch later and you can leave your comments later. You can send us whatever. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Keep on learning. Thank you.